The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshiped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the ages. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today you don't have Monsignor doing a homily, you have me on this most holy solemnity of the Trinity. Monsignor Frank McNamee, your rector, and me, Father Yuri Patrick Mark, celebrates our anniversary of ordination to the priesthood of Christ on this very day, May 26th. Your clap for your rector. That's his anniversary. So Monsignor, Monsignor is 29th years, celebrating his anniversary of 29 years of priesthood, and I'm celebrating 17 years of priesthood. And so we thank God on this day as we come celebrate this mass with our brother priest, uh, We want to thank God for the many gifts and uh, the divine blessings he bestowed upon us in our priestly ministry with you, our dear people of God. A ministry which derived its source from the great commission we heard of in today's gospel when Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A mission of God the Father, a mission of God the Son, a mission of God the Holy Spirit. So this Trinity Sunday we celebrate today comes immediately after the Easter season, which culminated in the Feast of Pentecost we celebrated last Sunday. And in discussing the Trinity, some theologians always run into the trouble when they try to explain the Trinity. When in its essence, the Trinity is a doctrine to be known and lived by. For example, if we look at the context of marriage, a man can say, I know my wife. We've been married for 50 years. That same man cannot say, I can't explain my wife. Oh boy, you do that, you find yourself in big trouble. Similarly, in the parish context, you know, you can say, a parishioner can say, I know my priest. You can never and should never say, I can't explain my priest. <laughs> so, a mystery can be known, but not fully explained. Therefore, let us be inspired today to know the Trinity and to live by how our triune God has been revealed to us. One of the first uh, church fathers, the early church fathers, called Tertullian, in the year 200 era, 
he coined the term, he was the first to use the term Trinity. And so the doctrine of the most holy Trinity is a mystery. Something that can be known, but not fully understood or explained. So my task here today is to share some of the way we know and live out this Trinitarian doctrine, you know, in our triune God. The Trinity is a mystery because it has to do with the inner life of God, which was introduced and revealed to us by our Lord Jesus Christ himself. That God is love, not in the oneness of a single person, but in the trinity of one substance. Three persons, one God. In the Nicene Creed, the doctrine of the Trinity is presented to us in a way that summarizes salvation history. The creed invites us to a belief system in one God who is revealed to us as creator and father of all things, visible and invisible. As father, he is the first person of the Trinity. In order to redeem the world, this one God is revealed as the only begotten Son, who is God from God, light from light, true God from true God. He is consubstantial with the Father, and our incarnate Redeemer who died and rules for us. So as Son, Christ is the second person of the Trinity. The creed then reveals the third person of the Trinity, God the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who moves all things, the cosmos and history. And so today's solemnity, these three persons who are one God because the Father is love, the Son is love, and the Spirit is love. And as Pope Benedict would say, they use caritas s. He wrote a whole book on that. Today's solemnity is all about the inner life of God. It is about relationship, as stated in the Responsorial Psalm. Bless the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. We are God's chosen people. And so it calls us into a direct relationship with our triune God and with each other. And in the second reading, it says... Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And so that we are to be open to the Spirit of God. That the Spirit of God should always be with us. That we should always be with the Spirit so that we can be led in the right direction. This means that we are meant to form and live in loving community. Like the Trinity which is the first community. We are called to live in an undivided unity, like the Trinity. So today, our triune God invites us to live and to pray in the spirit of the Trinity, to be more aware of our Trinitarian roots each time we mark ourselves with the sign of the cross. Something we learn as children, all, at the time of our introduction into the Catholic faith. The sign of the cross is a very powerful invocation of the Holy Trinity in everything we do. It is the shortest prayer of God's protection and God's blessings. And so you do the sign of the cross with these three fingers, you know, the Father, you know, basically asking God to sanctify our minds so that we can hear the voice of God, touching our chest or our heart to empower us with Christ's love and compassion. And then going from the right shoulder, where's the right shoulder? Your right shoulder, that's right, that's right, yeah, good. To the left, from left shoulder to the right, you know, giving our arms and hands to do God's work honor the guidance of the Holy Spirit for mission and ministry in the church and in the world. 
to our first introduction to this faith is this invocation which calls us to always walk with the Lord. When we enter the church, we sign the cross, you know? And some uh, great Catholic traditions in you know, rural areas, when they're passing by those churches, they will slow down and do like this, you know? And, 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 and when we start the mass, we invoke the Trinity. When we're doing baptism, we baptize in the Trinity. When we're doing marriage, everything, every sacrament we administer is embedded with the Trinitarian invocation. So today, we are invited to live out this Trinity in unity, community, and love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen.